Welcome back to the Van Jones Show. I'm here with Democratic Congressman and 2020 presidential hopeful Tim Ryan. So I just I got to ask, do we need all these people running? I mean, why is this <laughs> happening? And how do you feel about it? I think it? some should get out myself. <laughs> I mean, but you do. <laughs> Uh, I mean, is, is it going to hurt us? Is it going to help us? I mean, what do you think? I don't about think so. I know. I know some people are kind of spooked by it, and like we got to get somebody to run. It's, this is going to play out. Let's. We are Democrats. Let's have the ideas primary. Let's figure out where the country needs to go. Clearly, things aren't running well around you know around the country for a lot of people. We, education, agriculture, farmers aren't doing well. You know, there's a lot of inequality. Yeah. Criminal justice. I mean, there's all of these issues. Let's have a big conversation about them. Well, let's talk about that because there does seem to be a kind of a basic split where on the one hand you have people like Biden, they're saying, hey, let's, let's return to normalcy, return to decency, and they're making that kind of appeal. And then you've got the you know, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who are saying, listen, the, the old status quo was broken to begin with. We don't want to return to anything. We want to disrupt and go forward in a different direction. Who do you think has the better uh, argument? I think we need reform. I think you know we have to be decent. We have to be respectful. That that has got to be a part of the next iteration of the country. Is where we get back to listening to each other, respecting each other. We can't be so divided because no matter what the plan is, it's not going anywhere if we're divided. Mm -hmm. We've got to come together as a country. But I'm I'm on the reform side. I mean, I just think the government is outdated, and sometimes the the Democrats go out of their way to defend the indefensible. I mean, our education system needs totally reformed. I mean, our kids are coming into our schools, in many instances, traumatized. By what? Over, oh, just life. Over 50% of the people, uh, kids who go to our public school, schools uh, are low income. I see. They, they live in homes that have violence. They live in communities that have violence. And what we've learned over the last 20 years is that when you're traumatized, you literally can't, act, you're in fight or flight mode. You literally can't access the part of your brain that you need to, to learn. So I'm promoting reforms around social and emotional learning as a foundational component to educating our kids. You know, this is so interesting to hear you talk about this because one of the things I wanted to ask you is, you know, sometimes you are so strong on the industrial working class stuff, and that's often read as white folks. You know, some of the same problems and pain you're talking about in some of those, you know, declining white communities, they're right there in the black yeah, community, nah. right there in the Latino community. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what's in your heart and in your plan and in your playbook for African American, Latino, Native American, for that part of the party? Absolutely. I, you know, I, and I'm not the one who ever says, oh, Tim Ryan's just for white people. I mean, people don't understand Youngstown, Ohio, is almost 50% African American. Yeah. I mean, I've been representing these interests for a long time, and they are similar in a lot of ways. We have to get rid of the structural racism in the criminal justice system. That has to happen. Um, there's, <clears throat> because it's, it's a limiting opportunity. I mean, that's really, the, the, at the end of the day, the big problem. There's not opportunity in communities of color. I'm going to be proposing an urban Marshall plan hmm. in which we go into urban communities. I think we've got to clean them up. I don't think there's any reason why we have to have the level of blight that we have. Right. Some of these towns have thousands and thousands of homes that need to come down. And downtowns that are empty as well. We so need to got... invest in our downtowns. We need to renovate theaters, river walks, clean up our rivers, and, and entice businesses to come back to our community centers, especially in these small and mid-sized um, towns. I want a robust urban agriculture program in the United States. Uh, that's, I want to get. I want to get. It is fresh, uh, literally. Yeah. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get. I want to get healthy food into these communities. We have high rates of diabetes, especially in communities of color, and it's largely based on the diets. So let's actually invest into healthy foods, clean up these towns, get schools with social and emotional learning and vocational training. Let's get prepared to compete against China in the 21st century. Listen, man, that sounds, all that sounds awesome. Um, you know, I think part of the challenge, you got great ideas. I mean, one of the things I noticed with you, you know, you talk about the Green New Deal without talking about the Green New Deal. I mean, everything you're talking about, electric cars and, and all this sort of stuff and the infrastructure. Like, I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> you're so, you know, but talk a little bit about, on the nose about the climate crisis. Is that something that you're concerned about? Or I'm frightened, mm -hmm. frightened about it. I think like we all are. Yeah. And I think talking about it, because when you talk about those people at General Motors who lost their job or the truckers who lost their job, you know, they don't have the luxury to worry about climate change. They've got a mortgage coming. 
They've got their kids they're trying to educate. They got health care issues. They don't know what's happening with their retirement. It's not that they don't care. It's not that they don't understand. It's like they don't have the bandwidth. And so I'm trying to frame this in a way, and I want to invite people in to be a part of this broader conversation. And come to timryanforamerica.com and, and, be, and be a part of this conversation yeah. because it is fresh. It is different. But if the Democrats aren't for reform, if we're not for the future economy, then what are we doing as a political party? It's, time, it's go time for us, especially around climate. Yeah, look, I... Um, you know, you seem like like Biden with maybe you know more here and forward leaning. <laughs> is, is is Biden? I mean, he's got a similar passion for those people, but is Biden a mistake? Is Biden kind of going back? The the China comment worried me a little bit, um, but I you know I love Joe Biden. Like I was just on a trail with him, and I just walk up to him. I'm like, I love you. Like I, that's literally what came out of my mouth. And it's gonna be hard to run I, attack ads against the well, guy. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but I do. I do. I worry about the China comment. I think this is going to be about the future. I really do. I think it's going to be about who's the president that's going to allow us and help us dominate electric vehicles. Who's going to steer that investment? in the communities of color, into the Youngstown, Ohio's, and Akron, Ohio's, and Gary, Indiana's of the world that have been unplugged yeah. from any benefits of globalization for the last 30 or 40 years. I think the country's looking for a president to say, I get it, yeah. and I think I fit in that, and that's why I'm running, and I hope people will help me out, help me well, get there. Hey, listen, I, we're so glad to have you. I want to thank Congressman Ryan. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you on the campaign trail. 